that are danger to themselves floating around out there. You think, do icebergs get bigger and go on to better things? No, they float out in the sea and they just melt and they just end up doing it. I, I haven't seen anybody who gets out of a local church who, who ever did much for God. Let me tell you, God's program for, the, for this age is the church. That's why it says right here, don't go, if you don't like one church, find one that believes the Bible. There are some churches that believe the Bible, amen? But what it is, you know, this is one right here. You got to get in this. If the church you're going to is not very good, come here. They support missions. They're trying to get people in. They're the people working hard, trying to bring visitors. Amen. Do something that will count for right there. Don't be like this crowd here, this domed iceberg. It's like the religious crowd. The two hottest chapters in the whole Bible is one is found in the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 23. And he says, I did not send this religious bunch, but they went. And then the hottest chapter in the New Testament is Matthew chapter 23. And there Jesus is talking about this religious crowd that doesn't believe the Bible. And he said, he said, woe to you scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. You compass land and sea to make one proselyte. And when you have made him, he is twofold more a child of hell than you yourself. So one, these icebergs, when you when you get separated from the uh, from the main the main ice flow, it's not going to help you. Uh, you know what's really interesting about the igloos? Even though they're made out of ice, when you get inside, they're warm. <laughs> it keeps the Eskimos from freezing. Them. They get in there, and you have to build a little fire. And uh, they actually have an ice hotel. So the whole thing's made of blocks of ice. And you go in there, spend the night, and it's ice. We just got to have a nice sleeping bag. And some food to keep there. <laughs> but, uh, but when you get separated, one, that doesn't help you. I remember this one guy got discouraged. Somebody said something. Somebody did something, and he quit. Just dropped out. And so the pastor went by to visit them. They talked about hunting and fishing. And they had a nice fireplace there and had a nice fire in the fireplace. And so the pastor never said anything to him about going and getting out of church. You know what he did? He reached over with the tongs and he grabbed one of the hot coals there and he took it out of the fire and he laid it on the hearth. And after about two or three minutes, you know what happened to that one coal? It got colder and colder. The fire went out. It was just one big black blob there. And the guy looked to the pastor and said, okay, pastor, I'll be in church Sunday. <laughs> now, the other thing is, not only not only are you a danger to yourself, and that it's not going to help you any because you're going to end up just making a wipeout, but uh, you know what sank the, uh, you know what sank the Titanic? An iceberg. So you see, the iceberg is not just a danger to themselves, but they're a danger to other people. You get back from you get out of church, you get discouraged, you get down in the mouth. You know what happens? You drag your wife down, you drag your kids down, you drag your neighbors down, and uh, you know what? You end up sinking some of them. There's some children ended up like that because their dad was an iceberg, got out of church, ended up sinking his kids. You got to watch it. You know, the Bible says no man lives to himself, no man dies to himself. No matter what's going on, you have to think, what influence is this going to have on my family, on my kids? And the Bible talks here, and it says over there in uh, Timothy, it talks about those who were made shipwrecked. Turn over there to uh, 1 Timothy. Turn on that light there in the center, please. Uh, turn over here to Timothy. You say shipwreck. Yeah, there's some folks here ended up shipwrecked in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19. And it says here in 1 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 19, he says, uh, we'll start verse 1. This charge I commit unto thee. Okay, this is the conclusion. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which before, uh, which went before on thee, that thou uh, by them mightest war a good warfare. Now look at the verse 19. Holding the faith. Go to church. Read your Bible. Don't be discouraged. Don't let things knock you out of the race. Holding the faith and a good conscience, which some having put away... Concerning faith, have made what? Shipwreck. 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 So you see, as a parent, it is an awesome, awesome responsibility. I do a lot of things just because my kids. You know, I get discouraged. I have a problem. I think everybody has a problem. You know what? But everybody's watching you. Your children are watching you. And your neighbors are watching you. Let me tell you something. If you stay home on Sunday morning, do you think that your neighbor... Oh, yeah, they go to church on Sunday, huh? Ah, oh, they go to church on Wednesday, huh? Oh, they don't notice 
hey, buddy, they notice, and you don't think, let, let me give you this, this, uh, an, an illustration. Over here in Columbus, Ohio, I have a friend there. Uh, he preaches at the Ohio State football games, okay? And his name is uh, Hood, uh, uh, Jimmy Hood. Do you know Jimmy Hood over there in Columbus, Ohio? Uh, Jimmy Hood is a real rough kind of guy, but he, he has made a covenant with the Lord, okay, just between him and the Lord, that every football, home football game in Columbus, Ohio, with Ohio State University, he is going to go down there while those cars are waiting in line trying to get in the parking lot and pass out tracks and tell them that they need to get saved. Okay, so he stands up there. I mean, rain, sleet, snow. He goes out there, and he's been doing it for 10 years, brother, or 20 years or something. And one day he had a terrible cold, almost almost pneumonia, and the sleet was coming down. And, and usually he doesn't get it. You know, the people... The people never say anything. You know, you're 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 standing out in the street and they're driving by in their car and they have to stop there for like five minutes waiting on all the traffic, trying to get into the parking lot of Ohio State University. And so he's standing up there and he's saying, now, now you need to accept Christ your personal savior. God loves you and Jesus died for you. And then he'd hand out tracts so sometimes, you know. Well, preacher, he had like had like pneumonia and it was cold and it was sleep. And he, he stays there until the kickoff. Okay. And they've been doing that for like 10 years. <laughs> Might be longer than 10. I know it's at least 10. And he did that every day. Well, this day with a pneumonia and the sleet and nobody ever says anything, you know, and appreciation. And so he said, you know what, man? I'm about to die out here. These people don't care. I'm just going to go home. I need to go to bed. I need to get some medicine. And so he quit about 20, 30 minutes early and went home. And, and you know, about two weeks later, they have another home football game. And so he is out there. He felt better. and He's doing better. And and he's out there, you know, uh, saying, you need to get saved, and Jesus loves you, here's the track, you know. And they said, hey, preacher, where were you two weeks ago? You quit on God, huh? <laughs> he had about 50 people rebuking him for <laughs> two weeks ago. They expected to see him out there. They expect to see your car gone on Sunday morning. They expect to see your car gone on Wednesday. And when you stay home, what happened? God, actually on God. <laughs> he was telling me about that. He said, I'll tell you what, I don't care if I'm dying. I ain't, I ain't going to the first kickoff next time. The Bible says we can see World War III is about to take place. The economic collapse. One of the things that the Antichrist does is he takes over, listen, the world economies and requires that everybody receive a 666. Would you say the world is kind of setting up for that? Amen. I'm telling you what, brother, the world, I mean all of them. You know, first is just the United States. That thing I read last night in China, that was uh, uh, their problems over there. And so he takes over the world economy. The Bible says, as you see the day approaching, what? Go to church. Get busy. Amen. Of course, the first thing you need to do is you need to get saved. If you're Amen. not saved, all this... <clears throat> It would be better than nothing. At least you live 10 years longer and you end up with $20,000. But you know what? I'd like to live 10 years longer, end up with $20,000 more, and go to heaven too. Amen. 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 The Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, but what's going to happen here? These people are shipwrecked, and uh, that's the description of, of and in this case, I, the Bible, what the Bible says in following, it appears that they may not even be saved. It may not have even been uh, saved to begin with. They just got involved in religion. And the Bible says in Revelation, these guys out here are sinking. Cut that line off, would you, real quickly? It says there in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, and all liars, all liars shall have their part. Not only are these guys going to sink, crash, and burn, but the Bible says in the end, they're not just going to be shipwrecked, but they're going to be in hell for all eternity. And the Bible says... And uh, all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And the great tragedy is, the Bible says that God offers you the gift of eternal life. And everyone can accept that gift of eternal life. It says uh, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Jesus Christ. Where is that gift of eternal life? The Bible says it is in Him. If I put this chalk in this Bible here, and I said, here, you can have it. He said, well, yeah, I'm going to take the Bible, send the chalk. I mean, the chalk's in the Bible, that's right. 
God offers you the gift of eternal life. Where is it? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, when I accept Jesus, I get eternal life. Amen. Amen. So let's close the word of prayer with every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You say, well, you know, I don't know if I need to go to church. I'm not a Christian. Well, you know what you need to do?